I'm Rob Curry. This is Mark Williamson. We're from Dash. We're building the world's first connected navigation platform, a device that Mark's going to show you a little bit here. Great. So what we have here is the Dash Express. This is the first Dash-powered portable navigation device that will be commercially available in just a few months. What makes Dash devices unique are the set of features we enable via our two-way connectivity. We connect to the internet in one of two ways. One is Wi-Fi, so if you're out there using your laptop right now, I'd appreciate it if you didn't start any big downloads. The other is the cellular network. That's the network we connect to when you're out on the highway driving around. And what I want to talk about for a second is the first problem that Dash has tried to solve leveraging our two-way connectivity, and that's traffic. You all probably have a lot of pain around traffic on a daily basis, and that pain is caused because you just don't have the information you need to make the right driving decisions. So we've tried to solve that problem by sending live traffic data directly down to the device. And as you'll see over here, um, uh, that's a representation of what a screen will show you, the type of information you can get. We send this live data down, and it comes from two sources. One is uh, road sensors, and the other, more importantly, is actually the device itself. So as you drive down the road, you're automatically and anonymously reporting back the traffic conditions you're experiencing. So we're literally crowdsourcing traffic information. Uh, and that's a radically different approach. The other thing that's unique about Dash devices is they're literally getting smarter as you use them. Uh, most navigation devices, they sit in your glove box and the, the data gets stale and out of date. Well, with the Dash device, we're constantly updating the data on the device, so things like the traffic model, uh, map data, points of interest, adding new features to the, uh, to the software platform. So the device is always getting smarter. And the last feature that we're going to really talk about uh, in detail today is search. So we have a relationship with Yahoo, and we've been working with them to bring local search right out to the edge of the web and right into your car. Let's say you're on the way to San Francisco and you want to catch some dim sum for lunch. On any Dash powered device, we've got one over here. You type the search button, you go to the keyboard, type dim sum. See, it's in my recently used list there, but I'll go ahead and type it again. And within moments, we go out to the web and bring back the most relevant results complete with community-based listings. Now, can we point out, this is really different from a traditional GPS device, which is typically limited to searching an onboard, you know, one-size-fits-all database that pretty much goes stale the minute it leaves the factory. Uh, furthermore, they're limited to searching things like the text, and I can tell you Yang is one of the best dim sum restaurants, and no other GPS device would, would bring that up. So we thought this was pretty cool when we started driving around with it, but one of the things we wanted to really test was, you know, was it something somebody would use after the novelty wore off? Well, we've had 2,000 devices in, 60, in 25 cities driving for the last six, uh, six months. We've done about 1.2 million miles. And uh, the results have been really surprising. We figured that they would probably do searches like this a couple times a month. A typical GPS device lives its life in the glove compartment. You bring it out a couple times a month when you're lost. Uh, the results were surprising. They're actually searching, even now, when it's late in the test, a couple times every single day. 80% of the time they're driving, they have their device on. So it's really radically changed their expectation and interaction with a device like this. So what we're here to do today to do is show you and announce how we're going to take this kind of broad internet content into the car and allow all the rest of the content of the internet to get into the car. Um, individually created content, uh, commercially created content, and probably most interestingly, personally created content, uh, community created content. So I'm going to walk through a really simple example that pretty much anybody out there could do. Now, I, um, I understand that John is, uh, is into yoga, and let's say that he's uh, going to L.A. next week, and he wants to find the location of a bunch of yoga studios in L.A. in case he has some time between meetings to chill out. Well, if he looked on the internet, he might stumble across one of these geo mashups out there. This is one off of a site called Placial, and somebody has, lo and behold, mapped all the yoga studios in L.A. But where do you really want this information? You don't want it you know, here on your computer. You want it in, on your dashboard of your rental car to find it you know, right under your fingertips. Well, with any dash power device, all he has to do is go over here and copy the RSS or KML URL, switch over here to My Dash. My Dash is a website that allows any dash power device to be personalized. You can customize the content on it, send addresses to it, manager account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and create a GORSS KML search button. I go right up here and I paste in the URL and hit map it. I'm going to call it 
LA Yoga. If you keep your eyes over here, that's the device. It's just connected to the cellular network. I'm going to hit save. And within a moment, we should get a button called LA Yoga. So John's driving around LA. He says, I've got an hour. He hits LA Yoga nearby. And he gets the most relevant content right off of that palatial site in his car. Any changes to the palatial immediately show up there. So let me start with, show you another example that's a little more personal for me. Um, often, thank you. pretty cool, I think. Um, so I often uh, live in the South Bay. My wife and I come into the city, we did last night. When we do, we like to catch some live music, and in particular, jazz music. Well, there's a great site called uh, upcoming.org. It's a Yahoo community events site. People list all kinds of events, concerts, sports, things like that. And so using the same technology, I've created over here an upcoming jazz button. Whenever I'm on the way to city, my wife can hit upcoming jazz near my destination. We're heading downtown. And immediately comes back and says, what's going on tonight? I go in and say, yeah, Mitch Marcus, I like him. OK, where is it? Let's see, a little info about it. And if I wanted to go right there, I'd hit the route button, and it would give me turn-by-turn -turn directions right to the club. <laughs> uh, so I'm actually really excited to show the next um, application that we built here for integration. Um, and that's because my wife and I are expecting our second child here soon. And so she's putting, uh, pushing me to actually buy a home. I'm still relatively new to the Bay Area, so we're driving through neighborhoods that I'm just not familiar with, and I'm constantly asking myself, what do homes cost around here? So invariably at night, I land at Zillow.com, and I'm checking out home prices in different neighborhoods. Well, the reality is I want that in my car. So, um, so what we've done is we've created a Zillow button. So I just tap the Zillow button, and I can say nearby for the homes I'm driving past right now or near my destination. I select one of those two. Um, and we reach out to Zillow, and what they're going to return to us is a set of addresses along with a bunch of really interesting information. Uh, for example, the zestimate of the homes. Uh, so we can see that this, uh, this is about a $1.5 million place here in San Francisco. Um, but that's really not enough information, enough context. What I really want is more information. So I click the info button and we can see uh, the range, uh, the last sale date, the, the, the sale price, the number of bedrooms, the number of bathrooms. And so I can really get a lot of rich information. Now let's say after doing a Zillow search in a neighborhood that um, uh, that I'm not familiar with, but I end up thinking I can afford this neighborhood, then I actually want to see what's available out on the market now. Um, what we've done is, uh, in the same way that Rob done the ability to take a, uh, a map mashup from Playshell and bring it into the car, we're able to take data from Craigslist and bring it right into your car. So Craigslist is a great resource for a whole bunch of things, including uh, open house information. So you can go off and create a custom Craigslist search. There's an RSS link at the bottom, you just copy that link. Send the button down to your device, and so I just hit Craigslist near my destination. Uh, and here are all the open houses. So um, views, 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 maybe I should check this one out. It's a condo, uh, lots of really interesting information. And so, um, you know, very, very kind of valuable information, and rich information directly in the car. So I want to take a step back for a second. We've had 2,000 devices out the market for about six months. Uh, and that people have been searching a ton, and we've learned a lot. And it turns out that consumers are searching for, generally speaking, three types. They're, they're conducting three types of searches. One is a location-specific search. I'm looking for a Starbucks or a Costco. The other is really a category search. I'm looking for the nearest Chinese food restaurant or a pizza place. And the last, which was surprising to us, is people are actually searching for products. Uh, a top 50 search term for us is uh, the term iPod. Um, if you actually think about those three types of searches, what consumers are really doing is they're saying, I want to go spend money somewhere, right? Um, and when you find yourself with a consumer expressing intent to go spend money, the ability to help them take action, and in our case, action is the ability to route to a destination, um, and you can measure those things, and we can, we can measure this, it's all the right ingredients for a great uh, contextual ad model. So we think um, there's a big business opportunity with contextual search advertising in the car. Well, I hope we've uh, succeeded in showing you something. That's what we're supposed to do today. Um, but the other reason we're here is, you know, I'm hoping there's some better ideas out there than we've shown you today. The reason we're opening it up is to bring all kinds of content out there. So if you've got a great idea and want to bring it to the car, uh, send an email to rob at dash.net or mark at dash.net and come take a ride with Dash. Thank you.